All right, so on the intelligence barrier video, I got a comment from Boom Slayer saying, thanks for the video. My problem is what should I learn because there's too much to do in Blender, 2D, 3D animation, etc. I thought I'd put this into a video because it's something I've stumbled on uh, quite a bit in the past. A lot of beginners don't know exactly where to start. And there was also a follow-up comment saying, if I may pose one more question, do you think 2D will become outdated and left behind for all 3D in the future? I might do a separate video on that, or we might do in this video, we'll see how it goes. So for the question of where to start, I think it massively depends on the reason why you became interested in Blender in the first place. Because here's the thing, like a lot of people get into Blender because they are inspired by something. Like they see an animated film and that gets them excited. They think, oh, wow, I want to tell stories like that as well. So then they'll give Blender a try because maybe someone recommended it to them or they did a search on Google or YouTube and saw that you could use it to make animated shorts. And then that's their entryway into it. And they think, okay, well, I may be interested in a bunch of different things, but animated films is the reason why I'm here. Another example might be video games. You know, you might play some video games and think, wow, I'd love to build my own worlds. I'd love to play God and show the world what incredible things I can come up with. And I think that's how most people pivot their way into using Blender. When you are inspired in that way, I think it's a lot easier to decide what you want to do in Blender, like where you want to start learning, because those types of projects generally come along with their own unique set of skills. So for example, if you want to do animated films, you're going to need to learn about character design and modeling characters and then cleaning them up with retopology and then rigging them and then animating them. Because if you're doing an animated film, usually characters are like your focus of that. Of course, then you have like the environment outside of it as well, but the characters are like the main focus. And that's quite a unique workflow that goes on there. And then you'll encounter extra skill sets like UV mapping and texturing your character, or if you're not using textures and a creative use of the shader editor. And then for the actual rendering side, you need to learn how the renderer works in Blender and then end up going into compositing and doing all of that. So generally you start working from like one focus aspect of what's going to help you make that project and then expand outwards as those skills become a necessity for the steps in the project that you get to. Similarly for video games, you'll end up doing a lot of modeling and quite like the character design where we end up doing retopology for characters, you'll end up doing some kind of optimization consideration for your models for video game assets. And then you'll encounter UV mapping and texturing again so you can start to see how there's overlap in some of the needs required to make these projects. So the bottom line of that is that for whatever project you want to do in Blender, there's going to be a lot of overlapping elements. So a lot of common things that you should learn regardless of what projects you want to make. The absolute most common element, I think, is just basic modeling. It's the core fundamental of all free dimensional work, modeling, just creating geometry in three dimensional space. So regardless of what you want to do with Blender, I think you should definitely focus your early learning time, most of your early learning time with modeling and potentially sculpting as well. A lot of people might do modeling, but never give sculpting a try. And I think there's a missed opportunity there, a missed opportunity to learn skills, because I think sculpting actually gives you something unique, which I think is maybe a bit hard to describe. It kind of gives you a sense of how to make stuff in 3D space unrestricted by the limitations of the regular three dimensional modeling set. So being able to like put curves in certain places is a problem with traditional modeling, but not with sculpting. And when you release yourself from those restrictions, you start to engage, I think, a different set of skills. Because hand modeling, pushing vertices manually around, is I think much more technical when compared to doing sculpting. In so much as we might even want to call it like a form of engineering almost like model engineering. Sometimes things have to be very precise and set up in an exact way for other functionality to use them appropriately, like, you know, rigging and weights and all of that. So I think modeling and sculpting are things that you should definitely try regardless of what you're going to do with Blender. Now, things like shading, mapping and texturing are important, but not necessarily fundamental. I think shading is important by itself, and that is very distinctive from textures. And what I mean by that is most of the artwork I do now doesn't use any textures whatsoever. And that's because the shader editor in Blender is so extraordinary ordinarily powerful for making procedural materials that I just don't need textures. And that's because a lot of the materials I'm using can be built up from simple rules that may not be appropriate for everyone's projects. But here's the thing, I already had an understanding of how textures and materials and PBR workflows worked before doing this kind of artwork. And I think that is very important still. So there are some things in the shader editor workflow that I think you should learn about. I think you should understand how to put materials together, how shaders work, learn to understand them, what the different values do, like base color, which you might also call diffuse or albedo, what metallic does, what roughness does, what specularity does, and all things like that. Make yourself very, very familiar with the different values and experiment with them. These are 
are common principles that are going to be the same across most softwares, most softwares which also use a PBR workflow. As an extension to that, things like masks, how you can make different pixel content, colors, textures appear and disappear on an object in response to a mask, so like a white and black mask. And this is where we come to mix RGB nodes and math nodes. These might be complex terms to understand if you're very, like right at the very beginning of your Blender journey, but these are things that you will pick up and learn about in beginner tutorials. And this is why I think like the very famous fundamental beginner tutorials like Blender Guru's Donut Ones and CG Boost Launchpad course, and they also have their own free tutorial, CG Boost, for beginners. But there are lots of other options available. This is why I think these are very fundamental to follow because they will introduce you to all of the major aspects of Blender. It's such a large, all-encompassing software. The chances are you're going to end up bumping into almost every aspect of it eventually over your lifetime of using it. So I think shading is one of those really fundamental common features that you really should know about. I'd say you don't need to know too much on the rendering side about color management and stuff like that. I think you should just maybe educate yourself on the difference between sRGB and Filmic. There are other color profiles available, but I think the main thing you want to know is just how the white values in rendering softwares changes depending on what color profile you're using. But the things you should learn about when working with Blender aren't specifically Blender features. You should also learn something about composition, color, and light theory. These are things that are again going to be universal across all of your work and any software you use. Learning these generalized intellectual skills in the context of Blender is I think a useful way to onboard them because learning them in isolation can be quite boring and quite tedious, not very engaging and hard to remember. Picking up important theory like that in the process of making projects is, I think, always much more effective than learning them in isolation. And that's something I think I always had a bit of a problem with in terms of schooling, like actual real life schooling. Schools are kind of sometimes lazy in the way that they just try and onboard everything without the context of a project. And I don't think that's a very effective way of getting kids to remember things. Ultimately, though, if the, the terms composition, color and light theory sound a bit daunting and off-putting, you don't necessarily need to study them head on. A lot of these are things that you'll just pick up automatically, but more quickly if you're getting feedback for your work. So if you bookmark that fault there and just bring in the other idea that I know that a lot of people find the idea of kind of starting to learn sculpting, for example, quite daunting as well. And when you're learning things alone, even if you're following someone else, it's very easy to be off put if your results don't look the same as other people's. It's very dangerous making comparisons of your learning work with not just other learners, but other professionals as well. You need to understand that everyone has a first day when they when it comes to making artwork and learning those skills. You're probably not going to be extremely happy with your early work all of the time, but I think you should definitely try and enjoy the process anyway. Learning those new skills can be daunting and doing them in isolation can sometimes be a very difficult thing. So if the theory sounds daunting and learning these skills independently sounds daunting, then I think a solution is again, like my recent video suggested, to take part in art challenges. For example, Sculpt January if you want to learn sculpting because you're going head on with a very active learning process for those very tangible Blender skills. And if you're sharing your work, your results, and you're getting feedback from them, then you're going to be picking up those composition, color, and light theory skills just as a side effect of getting feedback for it. So you can hit two birds with one stone there in your learning process by kind of engaging your desire to learn these skills with an activity, a reason to keep doing them. And ultimately, if you take part in things like this, then it has the side effect of giving you new skills that you may not have been actively trying to develop. But on the side of that, one thing I've always maintained is it's also very important to make sure that you are building up your own personal projects as well. Working on something by yourself or with a teammate or an, an entire team are very important ways of learning your tolerance for failure and frustration. What I mean by that is if you're making something by yourself, you have an end goal in mind, you may not know the entire process to get there, but on your journey up there, you will likely encounter different points of frustration oh, I don't know how to model this properly. I don't know how to shade this properly. When that happens, you will discover how far you can go before you quit the project because you're frustrated. Understanding at what point you quit is important when it comes to making choices for what things you want to try again in the future. If you want to try a similar project in the future, you can go, oh, I got frustrated at this point last time, so maybe I'll adjust the idea to make it easier for myself or just so that I don't encounter something that I really didn't enjoy last time. Maybe a negative effect of that is that you keep yourself within a comfort zone, but I think it's better to keep yourself in a comfort zone than to quit using the software 
entirely, which may happen if you're just completely inundated with frustration. You find no enjoyment in using the software whatsoever. So I felt like you need to try and avoid frustration as much as possible when you're in that learning process. So let's give a bit more advice for people trying to find direction if they already know the kinds of things they want to make. If you're looking more into the two-dimensional side of learning Blender, so 2D artworks, animations, cartoons, the really interesting thing about YouTube and the number of creators we have on there in terms of the Blender community is that there's generally someone or multiple people for every general categorical type of artwork. So there are 2D creators that use Blender on YouTube, there are 3D creators that use Blender on YouTube, and there are mixed media artists that use Blender on YouTube. With that in mind, if you want to learn the 2D tool sets, and in particular Grease Pencil now, which is kind of like a 2 slash 3D tool set, there is actually quite a lot of content available for you now, but you just need to find those right people. I would list off some names of creators which I would like to recommend for kind of 2D and Grease Pencil works, but I don't want to get their names wrong in this video. So just go to Google or YouTube and type in uh, Blender Grease Pencil Tutorials or 2D artwork and stuff like that, cartoons. If you type in just Tune, that might come up with Tune shaders for 3D as well, so maybe don't do that. But yeah, just like look up Grease Pencil type stuff. I recommended a new bakery one from Kevandram, I think, in the recent video on the main channel. But basically, if you seek, you shall find, because there is content for all of these features available. Another thing I'll say is there's no shame in changing your mind and what you're interested in when it comes to deciding what to make with Blender, because you know, you might be interested in animated shorts and video games and regular artwork and all sorts of other stuff. 3D printing. Who cares? If you're just a generally curious human being with an intellectual engagement and a creative aspect about you, you're probably going to be interested in everything at some point. Jumping around different interests is a really good way of introducing yourself to all those different skill sets, and you'll likely learn a lot more in a shorter amount of time than if you were strictly focused on just one skill set. Something related to this as well is something that I've told people about project management in general, which is that if you're just strictly focused on making one single project from the beginning of your learning process to the end, you're going to kind of stunt your development. A lot of people worry about, um, I start so many projects all the time and I never finish any. Is that a problem? And no, the answer is definitely no if you're learning, because you'll encounter many more things, many more aspects of your skill set by jumping around different projects very quickly. Learning to finish projects is a different skill set entirely. And it's a different aspect of the project management process, which is again, very important. But I think there's a definite strong benefit in jumping around as many projects as you can early on and trying different things. You will learn a lot faster than the person that is very dedicated with their projects right from the get go. But I think there's a turning point there. So those that jump around projects very quickly at the beginning, because they don't know how to finish them, learn faster than those that are just stuck on one project. But then I think there comes a point where they slow down in the middle of the learning process and the others can catch up. I haven't thought too much about that, but I believe that's how it works from what I've observed in people. Anyway, yeah, so just keep all these things in mind when you're going about your learning process, if you're starting to learn Blender. There is educational content available for like every aspect of the software that you can think about, except maybe drivers. There's not a lot about drivers. There's so many sources of inspiration around for people doing all different kinds of projects. If you're interested in making a certain kind of project, it's pretty much guaranteed that someone else in the community is already doing something like that with it. Sometimes it's very easy to forget that the Blender community is absolutely massive, absolutely massive. You can and will find helpful resources when you need them. I think that'll do it for this video. So maybe we'll cover the, the uh, 2D versus 3D in a different one. So thanks for watching. I hope you're doing well and I'll see you next time.